Hi there, I'm Terry Singh, representing Virtualization.com, a media firm, Virtualization uh, media firm uh, that just rebranded, relaunched itself, and, and we did a couple of interviews yesterday, uh, and today we have uh, Jay Litke, CEO, uh, Embotics. Uh, we have covered Embotics in the past on my blog, and uh, we've done a couple of cool interviews. In fact, uh, two couple of days, a week back, uh, uh, there were a couple of good uh, review of Embotics in, uh, on a Citrix blog as well, very cool. Uh, good friend Barry, he, he covered that up. And uh, so, Jay, welcome uh, to Calm. Uh, how is it here? Thank you, Terry. The city's beautiful, the food's beautiful, the people are beautiful. Beautiful. It's, it's great so far. Absolutely, Absolutely. Jay. So, Jay, uh, you guys are, are here. You have I visited your stall. It looks great. I saw David as well. Absolutely. And, and, and he was busy preparing yesterday. And it was really good to see you guys finally. And meeting you finally in person is something which I really cherish, I really like. So, uh, let's just get started with. Embotics and, and sure. what is Embotics and, and how do you guys get, get started and maybe you want to get into the product line? Sure, I'd love to tell you a little bit about our history. We were founded in March of uh, 2006, uh, so quite some time ago. We were actually an early attendee at uh, VMworld back in 2006. And in this market, as you know, virtualization is moving so fast. And one of the benchmarks we look at in other companies is uh, how long have they been on our radar for? How long have we seen them? So we feel a little bit like veterans having been in the space for two years. Sounds a little funny, uh, but at the speed it moves, warp speed, uh, we like to think we're becoming veterans of the space. Uh, we sp spent the first 18 months uh, in stealth mode. We launched the company at uh, VMworld 2007, so we exhibited at 2006 you know, in stealth mode. We really came out uh, as a company at 2007 VMworld in the U.S. and uh, uh, came out of the gates as a VM lifecycle management company, or I should say the VM lifecycle management company. We were the first company out there using this Absolutely. Uh, term. We were the first one Absolutely yeah, pioneering yeah. this space. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been uh, it's been a great ride since that. We've we've been out of stealth mode now since September, and we're here in February, and it's been uh, it's been going like gangbusters. So we're very happy. The product V Commander. Just tell us a little bit about it. Maybe you would want to start about uh, the, the the whole life cycle management. How does mm -hmm. how does the industry look at it? Mm -hmm. And what are the perceptions? Is it really you know you have had customers, uh, all those guys in that stealth mode and that stealth boat, you know, mm -hmm. sitting. And, and testing it, what are their responses? And, and how do you think that the industry should respond mm -hmm. in the customer segment and, and how they can benefit from our life cycle management? I, I think our segment, the first thing on, on life cycle management, like any emerging market that, uh, that hits, um, the pioneer in chooses some words, starts defining the market, um, and describes, picks the descriptive words, and we chose VM life cycle management. And what's happened in the last uh, six months is we've seen some emerging startups and even VMware now starting to use the term VM lifecycle management. And we think that's a great thing because if you're the only one out there as a, an emerging startup um, evangelizing a, a, a new emerging market and nobody follows you, you have to ask yourself, is it really uh, something you should be doing? So number one, we've had extreme validation, uh, extremely pleased at that uh, on VM lifecycle management. And I think the way things currently shape up, there's still some confusion out there uh, of what that term means because so many people are starting to overload it. Um, and I think over the next three to six months, that's going to start uh, 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 calming down. So a uh, question we get as the early pioneer in the market right now is, uh, is your definition of VM lifecycle management, is it the same as VMware's? Is it the same as some of the other players out there? And I think we're all somewhat close. Um, but our view of it right now is that um, VM lifecycle management really does define a very big bucket of, um, of uh, capabilities needed for people to solve VM sprawl, to keep control of their production VM environments. And when we look out there at the solutions in VMware Lifecycle, the one announced here at, uh, at VMware Europe, we know it quite well. We've been working with VMware actually on it. Um, now it solves some specific problems in that big bucket. Now, they happen to call their product actually Lifecycle Manager, but it's really biting off a, a subset of problems in this bigger bucket, as are we. The whole sea of Lifecycle Management, Absolutely. they have a little puddle. Absolutely. Well, I don't want to call it a puddle because they're. I want to give them okay, credit. Sorry, they're they're biting off quite a bit, but uh, we are also as well. And... Uh, so I'll give you our definition of a VM lifecycle management, the one I think that is starting to stick out there that people are using. It's looking at these virtual machines now through their entire life cycle, from birth, uh, as it's deployed into production, and then at some point retiring it from production. Now that type of definition is one that a lot of people seem to be rallying around, but when you think about that, that's a lot of capabilities you need in there to provide controls over what goes into the environment, oversight of the environment once VMs are in there, and then at the very tail end, the retirement. And when we look at VMware Lifecycle, they're doing a really good job at the front end automated provisioning, a runbook automation type system, 
And we see a lot of those out there emerging. We know Opsware has one, BMC has one, uh, lots of these RBA type solutions. And that's really where Dunes was, was pointed, and that's where VMware has built Lifecycle. Yeah, but do, yeah, sorry. Absolutely. So that's not what we do, I guess, is we've never focused on being a uh, automated provisioning system on the front end. We've seen a lot of activity there, and we knew it was going to mature. We focus uh, sort of on the next stage, which is watching the VMs when they're in the production environment, looking for out-of-process things to happen, providing oversight once they're deployed, no matter which tool puts them into the environment, and then assisting in the reclamation at the very end, the retirement of pulling back these resources. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's great. Uh, Dunes indeed was a small uh, Swiss, Swiss company. Absolutely. There. And uh, yeah, that, that, that answers uh, yeah their lifecycle management. I hope you have a patent <laughs> on the lifecycle management. I think we've got six now, or perhaps even very seven. Good. Very good. Uh, yeah, because absolutely. Because I, I wrote an article for an executive blog, which I'm a blogger as well, professional a professional blogger. So I was I went a little further, you know, because we're talking about VM. Mm -hmm. I took. Uh, I do call it VM because VM is hot, and people go to the VM stuff uh, when you go on the internet. And mm -hmm. I spoke about VM and CM, you know, VM and CM, so lots, VM, uh, you know, supply chain. Mm -hmm. management Absolutely. System. So and and it's exciting, but I don't want to get too much into my story because that's mm -hmm. not why we're sitting here. Uh, but you know, getting from starting from the, the whole Dell story, you mm -hmm. know how smart these guys are, RHP. You know how how do you have those three trucks coming in Taiwan every day, and they, they ship the boxes. The boxes go to the, all the countries. Mm -hmm. In the countries that virtualize them, desktop virtualization, the, the VM uh, have their own life and death, mm -hmm. but you have a bit, physical box has its own life and death, mm -hmm. but that's a different story. But I think it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, Let me comment on that, because I think uh, I did read your, 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 your blog posting on the um, supply chain management. I think it's a great analogy, and it's one that we have uh, thought about internally quite a bit. On, on why do those principles apply and why did that resonate with us? And um, when you look at these virtual machines, of course, they are a completely different entity from the old physical world. And when we started the company two years ago, and we stayed in stealth, we spent a lot of time with CIOs, security groups, VM administrators. And the initial thing we heard two years ago was managing virtual is the same as physical. And everybody laughs today being you know, February 08, because you rarely hear that anymore. People have woken up and realized it's different. Mm. And when you look at where we're heading to the, you know, the ultimate holy grail of a utility type model where, where many more things are automated, I won't say everything. Um, but many more things are automated. Things are moving around. You've got these virtual appliances. You've got these virtual machines. They're black boxes transporting something, being an application, providing a function. I think the supply chain analogies really start playing. Yeah, indeed. And in fact, well, what I said, like I said, I don't want to get too deep into it. Sure. I'm doing a project in African virtualization. Okay. And, and there's an ethical issue. And I, yeah, I'm sure you guys are talking to the green lobby as well. You know, there's a there's a, 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 a you know, Basel convention where they spoke about what kind of uh, PCs and boxes should be and servers should be shipped to Africa and developing mm -hmm. uh, countries. Mm -hmm. And how do we how how do we take that responsibility to have that VM SEM and, and probably you can have that kind of an analogy mm -hmm. in a data center as well. Mm -hmm. And how should you have a good burial? You know, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Then I try to do that. David Lynch, uh, your VP, he's an excellent guy. He really talks about it from that amazing perspective that's out of the box. Yeah. And you get great perspectives of having retiring the way it should retire. Mm -hmm. Then he gets a good pension plan, things like that. Things are taken care of, you know. And then you have a, the whole supply chain. That's mm -hmm. great, amazing. So, but the comp, you, you, you covered a couple of. Uh, did you see a couple of sessions at uh, the VMware Day? They launched Stage Manager. And, yeah, I actually um, uh, a part, partner day was yesterday, and we were uh, we were uh, members of that, which was great to to sit in and hear the new emerging. Um, being a, a fairly tight partner of VMware as well. There really was nothing new for us yesterday. It was it was great to hear how it's been uh, uh, condensed down and, and presented now to the to the wider partner network. Um, uh, a bunch of things of interest. Uh, VMware now using uh, a great terms automation. They're now using lifecycle, uh, which we think is great. It legitimizes um, the space.